Welcome to the Teen Life Podcast, where we research teen culture so you can focus on connection. I'm Carly Duke, and I am here with Tobin Hodges and Caleb Hatchett, and we have an exciting episode for you. We're going to dive into a new app called the Ahead app, and if you haven't heard of this, it's fascinating. There are some interesting, maybe, things about it. We're going to talk about blind boxes and also how to handle a talkative teen if you have a teen who is trying to monopolize conversations, especially in your classroom or your group or your youth group, anything like that. We're going to talk through that and give some tips. But let's jump in to the Ahead app. Have y'all heard of this before? Because I am getting so many push ads for the Ahead app. <laughs> I haven't no. I haven't heard of it until you brought it up, but that's funny that, that your ad algorithms like Carly needs this. Yeah, right. apparently. Yeah, your algorithms have to be messed up for all the research that you do, but... Um, <laughs> I also, Thank you. I've never, I've never felt older than any time that you bring a new app to, to me. Cause I'm always just like, I have no clue what this is. And so <laughs> like a lot of times when kids will talk, you know, teens will talk to me about music, like I can kind of stay with it to the, for the most part, but for whatever reason, apps make me feel so old. Cause like I haven't, before you brought this to me, I hadn't heard of it. And I think the laps one was the same way. I can think I downloaded mm-hmm. laps the day that you told me about it. And I, I, that was the last day I went into that app. I haven't been back to it. So <laughs> me too. Yeah, I don't know if laps is going to make it. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, so this one, I have, I'll be honest, I have not downloaded this, so I have not looked into the actual app itself, but I did some research on the back end, but I just, I didn't want to pay for it, if we're being honest. But on the website, it says it's a head, H-A-H-E-A-D, a head app. So how you spell it? So from the- Okay, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it's a head. Okay, thank you. Wow. (laughs) Y'all are the worst. Okay, so the website says it's Duolingo for Emotional Intelligence, your pocket coach built by behavior change experts to transform your life. You said it was a paid app? Yeah, so it's free to download, but you, I I was having a hard time finding like a clear answer, but I think as of right now, it's around $9.99 a month. That's, yeah, so you just lost, you just lost the teen market already then. Sure. That's a lot. But I also think. I also think maybe if you get into it, there are like certain things like if you buy three months at a time, I'm sure you get a discount or if you buy six Mm -hmm. months. But I think I saw this pushed. The first one I saw was pushed toward teens, but almost from like a parent perspective, like, hey, are Mm -hmm. you a parent and your teen has anger issues? Mm -hmm. Buy them this instead of buying them therapy. It's kind of how it went. And I have mixed feelings about this. I will say this app looks cool from the standpoint of it's in an app. You do little like they they gamify it. We've talked about that on the podcast, but they definitely gamify it. So maybe a teenager would be interested if they're like, I don't want to go talk to someone. It might be worth a shot, but I also yeah. don't think it's a replacement for counseling or therapy. And that that's my thing with uh, every time is. You you can say, hey, if you can't get your teen in therapy for the myriad of reasons, insurance, money, you know, apathy, then fine, like use this. But don't say like this is better than or replacing therapy. Like, yes. agree. Right. Like, don't don't market it that way. It just gives it, it just gives people a chance again to just discount what therapy and counseling mm-hmm. can offer. So, man, when I think but I feel like as a parent, it might be a good first step. Right. Sure. If yeah. your teen's so a supplement because I've yeah, I've had parents that, you know, are like, man. You know, like with anger issues, things like that, that are like, we would love our teen to go to counseling, but they just don't like over their dead body will they go. So, mm-hmm. you know, in order to do something like this is like a first step, then they might be open more to a counseling um, experience or something like that. But yeah, I mm-hmm. uh, I agree, though. It's no replacement. Well, and I don't think they said better than therapy, but one of their reviews that they mm-hmm. pushed no. Was like it's like getting thousands of dollars worth of fer- therapy for nine ninety nine. Like, no. and so mm-hmm. that's how they're comparing it. They're not saying it's better than therapy, but they're also like showing people saying like, "I'm so glad I did this." The person that did that review probably needs therapy. So, yeah. Oh, sure, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> yes, I didn't have to go to therapy. <laughs> nine ninety nine, great deal. But when you get into the app, like, or at least on the website, it shows that there are three different journeys, is what they call them to choose from. So get things done, learn how to stop procrastinating, achieve what you need. Then there's be confident, learn how to silence your inner critic and just be yourself and then keep your cool. So learning how to resolve issues without losing your temper, 
or holding grudges. And so they kind of give you, you can kind of choose your path. My guess would be if this is popular or works, they'll continue to add more. But as Mm -hmm. of right now, there are only the three. But the most fascinating part that we kind of talked about this a little before we started recording Mm -hmm. that I think is maybe a horrible idea. They have what is called a self-awareness test. And the website is like, hey, ever wondered what people think about you? Like, Uh let's start your personal growth. And so you take this quiz, you rate yourself, then you send out a link to all your family and friends. They anonymously rate you on the same questions, and then you get the results and you compare them. (laughs) Yeah, that's a disaster. (laughs) Disaster. I just... (laughs) There's no world where that's going to be productive, Ugh. in my opinion. But I there's there's the part of me that is, you know, that right that catch line of everyone wondered what others think of you. That like is like, well, kind of right. Yeah. But then you're yeah. like, you start thinking about it more, and you're like, no, like no, I do not need to know that. And then you think of like teens, even too, and mm-hmm. the damage. Like you know, we talk about social media, the things that you know, constantly thinking what others think about you to actually know what's behind that door, good or bad. I think does. I think that's just it's just apart. masking. It's just masking cyberbullying, in my opinion. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like, listen. There are some people that do not have the maturity to handle constructive criticism, and like, in in that case, it could be productive in the sense of, hey, I love you. I want to talk to you about this, but I have to do it anonymously until you're ready to hear it. You know, but that also kind of gives pe- gives people. I mean, that's we talk about keyboard warriors all the time. The people that will sit behind a keyboard and say everything that they want to say that they, they mm-hmm. won't have the, they can't say it to their face. Like, and so it just, it gets just another outlet for that, man. I am just trashing this app and I'm so sorry, but <laughs> I'm sure that there's ways that it can be productive, but, but also like, this is going to like, I know I'm the resident old guy on this podcast and, and stuff, but like there are books for this kind of thing too. Like, and they're, and they're like less than $10 each probably. So like, I mean, like it's like, I'm not saying this is bad and you can, you can, you know, find your own path, but like, but some of that stuff is it's scary to me. Like it's kind of dangerous. So Yeah, I would stay away from the test. I think it would only work if you send it to very trusted people. Like yeah, this sure. is not an a-, a link that you would like post social media and be like, let me know what you think. Yeah. Or like mentors, maybe. Like Yes. But yeah. you can do the app without doing that. I honestly don't even know if you have to pay for that test or if it's like an entry of like to get you hooked and then they try to mm. sell you on the app. I'm not sure. Um, so I'll say we have, as you can tell, we have mixed feelings about this app. So do your own research, mm-hmm. but it might, you might be intrigued if you're like, Hey, my student needs help in this area and they mm-hmm. won't read a book. They won't go talk to someone. It might be something worth looking into of like, Hey, let's try it for a month and just see if they like it or if they'll do it. Maybe you don't yeah. commit to the six months if they're never going to open the app and you just wasted a bunch of money, but it's a new thing or newer. Like I said, I'm seeing it all the time on social media. So check it out. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of seeing things on social media, have you guys seen blind boxes? Do you know what those are? Oh yes. You do? Okay. Yeah. I, this, I was is, first... this is this is not a brand new thing. My my oh. teenager when he was like five to eight was obsessed with these dumb things. And so yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, they're great. They're they're so great, but it's 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 yeah, anyway, I'll let you kind of explain it. I, I hadn't seen yeah. them until recently. I think the first thing I ever saw on it was the YouTube channel, like Good Mythical Morning, Rhett and Link, mm-hmm. like did blind box openings. And it's so intriguing. It's it's basically like identical boxes that will come in mm-hmm. a set. And on the boxes will have each of the little figurines is eventually like what they are, figures in the set. And then there's different um, chances, like there's different odds. So I one of the main companies that does it kid robot said every figure in a series is displayed on the side of a box along with odds of finding each one you can also see one or two chase figures which have the lowest odds and are shown in a silhouette chase figures are super rare and also are harder to get than others um but it's interesting it's almost like a pokemon card pack opening things like Mm -hmm. that where you don't know what's in it and there's this cool fun of of seeing these rare low odd cards or figures come through. I've seen it too on TikTok where they'll like get a box or a set and say like, I want this specific one and then like open it until they get it. It's almost like gambling for kids. Oh, it's a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, you're, you're not wrong. That has like, no it's, payoff. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. and so whenever my oldest was 
I think he was like second, third grade and really got it. Like he, it was whenever, and admittedly, I look back on this as a parent, like, man, I could have totally monitored this better. But uh, he got really obsessed with some YouTube channels like Evan Tube, which is a lot like Ryan's mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. Um, and and just like there was these random like just d- toy collector guys and like Evan Tube was a kid. So it was a little different. But then there was like these these guys that all you see is their hands and like a POV camera and they just sit in there on open. Like it's just videos of them opening countless toys and and uh blind boxes lego was really big into it in the in that Mm. time like they had these mini they had these blind bags which are like little mini pouches and you could get like mini figures and they had sets so like they had like a every season they had a set of like 10 and so like you get these little two dollar mini figure bags and you know so then we end up with a hundred of the same character and then like you know and like two or three of each other one um, but yeah, like my kid was obsessed with him. Like he, like he would get his allowance and immediately like say, can we go get a blind bag or a blind box, whatever. And it was, you know, but it, you're right. Cause it very is much like that dopamine of yeah. maybe, maybe this time I'm going to get it. Maybe this time I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, so I mean like, it's cool. And it's in some sense is like, it's, there's a lot of like, it's a, it's a kind of an, usually it's an inex- inexpensive way of getting toys that kids like to mess around and mm-hmm. collect with. Um, the adults that do this, in my opinion, kind of ruin it, though, because because they want these YouTube channels and then they want to sell the yeah. things and so they go buy a bunch. Of, I mean, Pokemon cards are the same way. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a Pokemon card is essentially a blind box. Um, and with this thing, though, like I've seen an adult version where like you can spend like two hundred fifty dollars and get a blind like autographed jersey. I don't know if you all seen those like Mm-mm. like it's like a you know you have the chance of getting like the hall of fame player the, the all-star or whatever Whoa. but then there's also like somebody <laughs> I, I watched somebody <laughs> open one and it was like they got i don't remember who the player was but they got a, a signed jersey of a player that like just left the team you know that, oh, that no. they oh, got no. of and it's like well that stinks so <laughs> yeah so anyway yeah it's it, but i mean you, you hit the nail on the head caleb it's it's a form of child gambling essentially you know mm, it's it's yeah. just yeah. it's just grown up it's just another version of like what, when i was a kid it was happy meal toys of like you mm-hmm. go to mcdonald's and like which happy <laughs> meal toy you're gonna get but it's you know a lot more intense now obviously yeah well i think another one have y'all heard of mini brands have y'all seen these Mm-mm. i know they sell oh, them at target yes. they come in the little ball and i'm seeing oh, these yeah. on tiktok yeah. too because you open them and they have like little versions of food little versions yep. of like toys mini be books. like a coke can like brand name stuff which is yes like, like I guess what taco bell brands, but. Ta- mm-hmm. but i've seen like books too i'm on book, book talk mm-hmm. we've talked about this on the podcast it's fine but i like got on and i like sat there and watched this girl open all the they're expensive though i want to say yeah. they're mm-hmm. like 20 dollars a ball and you get like five teeny tiny toys but they open them in their little versions of books that you like can like mm-hmm. open and read like like if they come with them, wow. one of them I saw came with a magnifying glass. But I think what's fascinating is I get the dopamine of like you opening it. Mm-hmm. But the videos are so popular, which is fascinating to me. Like, is this a form of like ASMR kind of stuff where they're wa- you're watching someone else <clears throat> do I, this? I, I think, too, it's just the younger generation. I mean, like Gen Z, Gen X, like I, that's just what we they do i think it's interesting too even on twitch on some of these live streaming sites they were there are people that will live stream gambling it got Mm -hmm. banned off of twitch but like that it was a huge market Mm -hmm. of like watching other people gamble because like i think you get so invested in like the storyline and i think that's why a lot of creators be like i'm going for this specifically and then you get to see them react anytime they get you know what they want or like they win big right If, if they pull something that they've been going after you're like yes and you're able to celebrate with them and then you know that community is like oh oh my word sure. oh my word and you're able to feel a part of something too well and so FIFA's it's, it's the same way like when you do fifa players yes like it's well the same it's, kind it, of but that's thing. the thing it's also in video games now too like i mean the, yeah. the, the mlb the show does this like you can buy cards online hmm. and pull players and stuff like that the fifa does that with uh and madden does it too with mutt yep there, there are even two in video games like CSGO is a popular video game and you can buy loot boxes. And the thing that's interesting with this is like you can sell those things that you get in a loot box for real money. Hmm. And so people are viewing that video game loot box almost like a real casino. Hmm. I know creators that have bought like 
a knife for thousands of dollars, like an in-game knife, virtual <laughs> knife for like mm-hmm. thousands of dollars, almost like a stock market, held on to it and then yeah. sold it for more. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. The world That's is That's definitely a thing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like it's it's almost like crypto too. Like it's like a their own version of crypto, but just collectibles. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But sure. I also think too, like especially with with teens and and children, seeing somebody open that stuff in a video proves that it's not a hoax too. Like mm. it proves like oh like yeah you can actually get this, and then it gives them the carrot to chase. When yeah. really like as a parent, you have to be like, hey man, like you're right, this is real, but also you are very l- unlikely to get this. It's like mm-hmm, buying a lottery yeah. ticket. Like you are never going to win the lottery. And if you do great, but like th- the chances of you actually pulling this and having it, I mean, I, re- I vividly remember having to explain to like a seven year old, like you spent all this money and you can get nine of the same things and it won't matter. So like yeah. just remind yourself, like kind of like having that conversation of like, this is not a good way to spend your money. Yeah. Right. I think yeah, it's that's... interesting and there might even be value to do like a, gambling on live stream things like that but mm-hmm. it's it's interesting to see the streamers that do gamble live because they will be paid by these online casinos and stuff like that like millions of dollars to basically just stream this to get people to think oh i can win it too and mm-hmm. so while i think there's not really drawbacks like on the surface of like blind boxes things like that i think it's something to be aware of of like this i this dopamine yeah. hit of man i'm rolling and then, like Tobin said, to be able to start conversations of like, hey, just know, or hey, if you're seeing streamers that are gambling, that's not even their money. They're being paid to make it seem like you can do it too, even though the odds are way, way, mm-hmm. way against you. So I think sure. it's an interesting balance, but just yeah. something, I don't know. I just thought, thought blind boxes were cool and interesting. So didn't think we'd get yeah. to <laughs> online gambling, but here we are. Yeah, well... In a couple of weeks, we're gonna we're gonna talk about gambling when we get closer to our Super Bowl episode and stuff like that. So that'll mm-hmm. be kind of like a nice way to tie in some some more gambling talk. But we had a question come into our podcast, um, and which is great. So if you have questions, don't forget you can always send them to us. We'd love to talk about them as they relate to teens and in uh, in schools and stuff. But the question was, how do I handle a teen in my group or class who talks too much? So first and foremost, let me ask you this: <laughs> Were you guys over talkative teens? I feel I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to to Caleb, but were y'all like hyperactive, over over talkative? Uh, I don't. I wasn't necessarily. Yes, no. I'll be honest. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, once I got older, I had kind of learned how to temper that. But I vividly remember my fourth grade teacher being like, mm. "Um, you need to be quiet. <laughs> 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 like, you need to stop talking mm-hmm. now." Mm. Or my fifth grade teacher told me I asked too many questions. Like that mm. was the kind of that I, I do was, see. I can yeah, see, see that. I was yeah. more of like mm. the I wanted to impress, and we'll get into like reasons why you have mm-hmm. overtalkative teens. But or I wanted to make sure I was right, and so I asked all the questions. I don't know that I would say I was a monopolizer talkative teen, but I did like to chat with mm. the people around me, depending <sighs> on who was around me. Okay. It's just funny the difference in us because I see car- for those listeners. Okay, imagine this is your older sister, someone who never <laughs> got below an A, <laughs> elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. It was horrible, it was horrible. So yeah, I overtalked, <laughs> not in the same way, not in the same way at all. I for sure wanted to monopolize. I wanted all the attention. Uh, I remember it was about eighth grade, like middle school is like real problem for me and i remember one of my teachers like is reading like we're we're doing something and i keep making jokes and she says it gives me like a debit like a demerit thing and it's like go in the hallway <laughs> until we are done and i'm like she just wanted uh, to do her job caleb she's like right i, can't do, I know I can't do my job <laughs> yeah and it was a teacher who like also like we were family friends with and like i i really like she was great. And so like, I go out there and I'm like, I cared what teachers and other people thought about me. So I'm just distraught. And she comes out and is like, Caleb, you're funny, but you need to be funny at the right times. Like mm-hmm. it, it makes it so yeah. much funnier and better sure. if you're, if, if you do those at the right times. And I remember like actually taking that to heart. And even I remember one time in, in the car, my mom says, Caleb, you talk too much. She says, you don't want to be like, and then like throws out one of your friends, Carly. 
<laughs> and it's like, oh. look at, like, you know, he can be kind of annoying. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. I okay. get it. And it clicked. And it was yeah. like, there, there's a balance to not being annoying. But it was about, I started yeah. to reel back in high school. But I, yeah. up until eighth grade, it was unfiltered. Yeah, I... I was very shy, like most of my school career until high school. I kind of got on my on my shell a little bit, but I was always kind of more of a pick my moments and mm-hmm. observe person. I wasn't really a talkative person. So, um, in all in of that, a lot of that was insecurity, shyness, but also like my parents were both teachers in the district I went to school in, and I was terrified of being in trouble because like this is you know I'm old. So this was pre like. Like this is like the beginning of emails, but like they were like a phone call away, and it was always like, man, I I know that this would be a problem. So, um, but we kind of talked about some of this, but like some of the reasons they might this might happen is it's, sometimes it's often linked to ADHD. Uh, like I just said, they they could be hiding in insecurity. They might like being the center of attention. They want to be liked or impress others. Um, and some of them may may not be hit, like feel like they're being heard. Uh, they just might be in, they might be encouraged by peers. Like there might be peer pressure. And I mean, really, a lot of it sometimes is just they're just socially unaware because they're still learning. And so mm-hmm. here's where it can be bad, though. So we kind of talked about this a little bit, like Caleb was saying, it can be disruptive in group settings. Uh, it could prevent lessons from being taught. It can prevent, you know, people from being able to express feelings and emotions and and knowledge that while you're talking, uh, it can and it can get annoying to others. Like we all have that person that we know like as an adult or as a teen or, you know, whoever, whoever's listening, you all have that one person in your life that you're just like, man, I just, that guy would not shut up. And I, whether it was from high school or adulthood or whatever. And so like, you don't like, you just have to remind yourself that like, and and it really does monopolize the whole conversation. And, you know, some people, and that kind of depends on your personality. Some people actually don't mind conversations being monopolized because it's, it it takes the pressure off them to have to have conversations. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, some people do mind that. And so uh, here's some tips that we have what kind of have. So if you're listening, if you're a teacher or you're a parent, or even if you're a teen that you have friends, or maybe you might be having one of those moments where you're just like, oh, my God, they're talking about me. Um, and so just uh, <laughs> here's some tips to kind of redirect that. So first of all, if you especially if you're an adult, like be, gen- like, be gentle when handling this, like you don't want mm-hmm. to like harm self-esteem or stifle any creativity or personality like that's not our goal our goal is not to change or tell people to change their personality it's just it's more about control than anything um if you're in a class or a group setting like a youth minister or a teacher uh refrain by asking something like is this is someone else going to speak up so you know carly doesn't have to answer all the questions and that kind of stuff uh, you can also have that talkative student, like sometimes like I, I did this as a teacher, have that talkative student, like lead a discussion, like have, mm-hmm. like where they're the ones calling on people or whatever. And that kind of gives them a sense of ownership, but also it, it forces them to have to like pass the baton and not always be the one that has the right answers to stuff. Um, create a game or activity. So every, so everyone can talk, you know, put a time limit on how, how much people are talking and uh, sometimes just being kind of like pa- somewhat passive aggressive and just like, hey, someone else talk now or like, hey, can someone else answer this question? Because we've heard a lot from this person and just, you know, <laughs> be a little careful. Like it can be a little, little sarcastic with that. But um, sometimes that sometimes that gentle reminder of that just kind of reminds us in like, oh, I really am talking a lot or I am answering a lot of questions, you know, and stuff like that. So um, and then the, 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 the biggest thing like Caleb just shared. Talk to them one on one. Pull them out. Like you know, the the biggest mistake you can make as an adult, and and believe me, I am absolutely guilty of this, and I'm sure we everybody who's listening can be, is coming down on them in a group setting or or yeah. you know correcting or berating them in a, in a group setting because that is the quickest way to one lose trust with that student and that teen, and also just kind of like it could be harmful because then it makes it makes the attention be on them in a negative way and that can create bullying and other problems and then if you are a teen listening to this and you have friends like this remind yourself that like it's it's simple but like how would you want to be handled in a situation where you need to redirect redirection would would it be like would you want to be made fun of in, in front of all your friends or in a group chat no like you'd want to be talked to individually and calmly and so that way you can kind of have time to process it where it's not where everybody's talking to you. So mm-hmm. yeah. 
I I see this a lot in our teen life groups, especially when mm-hmm. it's a smaller group and you're like, oh, no one else can talk because this one mm-hmm. person will go off on a story for 10 minutes and then it derails everything. <laughs> but before I've had to have a conversation where I'm like, hey, stay off here and talk to me for a second. And sometimes if you frame it of like, hey, you're a great leader or hey, mm-hmm. I appreciate what you have to say so much but I need your help next time to make sure everyone else talks. And so I'm relying on you of like, pull them in to the helpful side. Instead of being like, hey, you talk too much. I don't want you to talk that much again. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, you're so great at this and you have so many great things, but we want to make sure everyone talks. So can you help me Mm -hmm. with that? And sometimes that gives them purpose and also a reason to do that, which I would love to talk to teens Yeah, for a second. Which, first of all, talking is not bad. Yeah. As a talker, let me tell you, talking is not bad. But as Caleb said earlier, too, sometimes your words mean more when you say less. Yeah. So if you mm-hmm. choose the right time to talk, it's going to mean more. And so if you're a teen who's wanting <laughs> to maybe talk less, especially in group settings, here are some questions that you might ask yourself. First of all, is this relevant to the discussion? Is That's what I'm one. about to say the going to help? a big one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if you ask that every time, I bet you'd cut down how much you say in yes. half. <laughs> but game, also, game, game. have I already told this story in this setting or to this person? Because I find myself doing that. Josh mm-hmm. gets so mad at me. I tell the same story over and over mm-hmm. again. Or can I tell this story in a more concise way? Or is this going to take up the whole setting? Asking that, maybe being like, maybe we should save this for another time. Yeah. And then also, is my talking keeping others from feeling safe to share? Mm -hmm. Am I talking over people? Mm. Something like that. And I would say, too, a tip, maybe count how many times, if you know this is a problem, if an adult especially Mm -hmm. said something to you, maybe do it one time where you tally. Mm -hmm. How many times did I talk in this group or in this class? And then the next time, play a game and be like, all right, I'm going to do two less times. Yeah. The next time. Yeah. And one thing that, if you are an over talker and you are someone that's like, if you're listening to this as a teen or an adult, really, but especially teen, if you're, if you're like, man, I think this might be me. Um, just know that I'm like this too. Like there are some times whenever like I'll interrupt people because if I don't say what I need to say or say what I want to say, I'll lose the train of thought. And then next thing you know, it's like, Oh shoot, like I forgot it. So like just some things that you can kind of help with that is like maybe even like jotting a note in your phone or, mm. or writing it down of like, I, I had something to contribute, but I don't have to say it right now. So I'm going to make myself a mm-hmm. reminder. And that kind of helps you one with like your memory, but also to just knowing that, Hey, not only if you all, if you over talk, if you're also interrupting people to over talk, it kind of makes you look like the, like the problem in a lot of ways too. So right. just kind of reminding yourself that, Hey, these, these are good and valid things to say, but I have to do it in the right way. So if you're forgetting, if you're forgetful, like I am, then just write it down, make a note in your phone or, or like, I like to do like the which I think is like the national bathroom sign of like sometimes I'll like I'll hold my fingers together to remind myself oh yeah like I, this is what I have to say um, I have to say this and I need to remind myself to say this and so some mm-hmm. of that too is me being old and forgetting forgetting things but you know so if you're a teen listening like, like once again I want to reiterate like talking is not bad and, and mm-hmm. really like if you are comfortable talking now think about all the great things you're going to do when you're older because you have mm-hmm. the comfort to be able to yeah. share and, and lead which is great um but if you're anybody who's listening, thank you for being here today and listening to what we talked about. We talked about a lot of things today that might be out of your out of your wheelhouse, and that's okay. Just um, we're glad to share some things with y'all. And just remember to subscribe, subscribe to all podcast platforms on our YouTube. We have video podcasts there. So subscribe to all of our podcast platforms and just come back and tell your friends about us. And don't forget that teenagers are not a problem to be solved.